May we start the second symposium for which I invite the chairpersons, Dr. Subarao, Dr. Rushi Deshpande, Dr. Subarao from Chennai, Dr. Rushi Deshpande from Mumbai, Srijit, Srijit Padmasaran, Dr. Narayan Prasad, and Dr. Saili Thakre to check the chair. We have three sessions, total 45 minutes. We'll finish. No, I think, yes. Same 10, 10 minutes and then discussion. The first talk will be by Dr. Vail Arvind on donor with multiple renal arteries. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good evening. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So it's a more of a surgical aspect and uh, I'll cover it very quickly because I thought when I was preparing, I thought it's 20 minutes. I just saw it now it's 10 minutes I have to rush through. <laughs> so just uh, 20 seconds about the normal uh, anatomy. Kidney spans between D12 and L3. Uh, renum hyl, uh, renal hilum, that is the uh, lower part of the L2 and L3 where the renal artery rises. So the radiologist should have a one vertebra above, one vertebra down for them. Uh, identifying the polar arteries. So it should be 11, D11 to L4. And uh, right renal artery goes behind the IVC. And if it's the aberrant artery, it goes above the IVC. So all this delineation should be done by the radiologist. Otherwise, we'll have a confusion while doing surgical thing. And sometimes polar arteries, lower polar arteries, go over the ureter and cause obstruction, a ureteric obstruction. These are the things we should keep in mind, and we should ask uh, the radiologist to give more ideas so that this, during surgery, inadvertently, something should not be in a cut or uh, this often happens, right? So this is a picture depicting L1, L2 in between the hilum, the hilar artery rises. Upper artery is the accessory polar, I mean, uh, hilar artery, lower hilar accessory artery, and we have abrant polar arteries. So that's what the radiologist call it. I'll come back again. I'm not going to detail the capsular arteries. So this is the where renal artery, branches of renal artery. Sometimes we get a, reported by the radiologist, the infrenic, uh, phrenic artery, there's a, Renal artery gives upper, um, that is a super, suprarenal gland supplied by three arteries, one from the renal artery, one directly from the iota, one from the inferior phrenic artery. So most of the time, radiologists give the, the branch from the renal artery as the inferior phrenic, but that's not correct. But renal artery gives two branches. One is a superior, uh, inferior uh, branch of the super, suprarenal, and it supplies a ureteric um, as well as a pelvis also. So this, uh, I show you one, thing um, in the uh, slides, how we, the surgeons, we made a mistake when doing surgery. So this is the thing, I just want to go to detail, but this is the definition of the multiple arteries. If anything, more than one artery is multiple in donor. So even if you have an early bifurcation, even the single artery will become multiple. So we have a renal artery. We call this a main renal artery. We call it then extra renal main artery. It again, it goes accessory and aberrant. The main thing which is in the pole is called aberrant polar arteries. So now the point of surgical things. We always vein to vein, external iliac vein. Even nowadays, we don't sacrifice any vein. So if a surgical skill is, I mean, prominently evident in our group, so we can go for how many even renal veins, we can understand to the external iliac vein. But arteries have a choices. We can have external iliac artery, internal iliac artery, then deep inferior epigastric artery, and ureters by the lich grigoid method. So whenever you make up, see, there are surprising things might happen, even some findings incongruity be there for reporting and on table. Uh, so it's always better to preserve the deep inferior epigastric artery while doing recipient surgery. Later we can tie it uh, if it is not used. So anastomous choices, this I'm not going detail, I'll go by pictures. So again, I'll just skip this for one of time. This is what the anastomosis technique, you can have a two arteries, straight away you can diagnose I'm anastomosis to the internal or external. If you have upper polar artery, you can make a, a piggyback. You now you make a small hole in the main renal artery, you can anastomose. Likewise, a lower polar artery. Likewise, upper renal artery, the one of the segmental artery. Lower polar artery, the one of the segmental artery. All these things, the variations can be done. So this is a conjoining methods. There are various names for that. That's called a single ostium, single inflow orifice, single channel, common barrel, single inflow conduit, common stem, pantaloon, pyjama techniques. So all these things, people are using various, uh, you combine two, is a bench, you take the two arteries, put an eye slice, 
slowly you do all these kind of this called conjoining. This this is very familiar in certain institution, but it all depends on surgical skill, and we have to use the loop eight zero proline, and uh, this is also one of the things you can go sideways three. Also, you can anastomose in a single common barrel. So here up. This is what the single common barrel you can make the main hilar arteries. You can bring another polar arteries into that as a picky back. So these are all different variations we can have. So sometimes we use recipient epigastric artery. Suppose you have an upper polar artery. It was cut in the during surgery, but you don't know how to connect to the either to the internal iac or the external iac. So we we can take the inferior epigastric artery as a internal position graft, or otherwise known as extension graft. You can use it and you can anastomose to the internal layer, external layer. So this that's why I said whenever you now we make a surgery, it's a very simple thing, just to keep the inferior epicastria intact at the end of the surgery, but make sure that it should be tight in the end, otherwise, sometimes it will bleed also. So it, it's a so this is what the variation. And here we can use the other grafts like a gonadal vein. If you do a recipient donor surgery, the gonadal vein always comes along with the ureter. You can preserve that vein, it later it can be used. Or if you were using cadaver transplant, see you see the, all the uh, uh, liver transplant people and the cardiac people, they'll always, under the end of this uh, cadaver dissection, they'll take all the bitten pieces of ves vessels and go. At least we should as well do it. We take some kind of external layer, kind of, so we can, it can be used as an extension graft in the, so when we pack and send the organ, we can always send some kind of bitten piece of artery so that it can be used. Even if it can, as, can go to as below as a femoral artery. So all these things can be used while doing surgery because at the time we cannot put a synthetic graft. This can be used in a cadaver transplant. So this is what I said. So we can always preserve the external, iac, um, sorry, in, inferior epicastric artery. We can use it later. So this is a very, very good lumen. And here is a gonadal vein. It always comes with a donor nephrectomy. When you when it, when the entire kin comes in on block, so you in total, you just you see on the slice, the gonel will always be there. Don't discard it till the surgery is over. Keep it there in the slice. It can be used later. So this is another gonel vein. These are different variations. We see about thirty percent of the time, unilateral uh, double arteries and ten percent bilateral. So anyway, we cannot reject the demand is more than the supply. So uh, we have to use it every organ with the with available surgical so we can pass on to the patient. So this is what different. All these things last six months we have seen in our patients. So you have to remember that our surgeons are lab surgeons now. They don't go for right side, even though right side single artery, and they don't go on right side. They want to take two arteries on the left side because the right side, technically it's difficult to, to lab because they don't, um, the vein, because donor safety is always. But now after crossing 100, uh, for the donor at surgery, is now my surgeons are a little confident that they go on right side also. So these are the thing, different different arteries. So so always I make a diagram soon after the surgery is over. So to for my memory, so any graft dysfunction, hams, we should not think always about medical cause. Some polar artery or hilar artery, the anastomosis could have been gone or anastomosis. Some hypertension, the post of one one six months later, one year later. So we have to look back what went wrong. So if you have a ready-made diagram, it can be useful. So soon after the surgery, as soon as I come out of the theater, I always make a diagram and just put it in the patient, patient's first page of the. And so it constantly reminds me that I'm dealing with a different patient. So these are the different things. I always make this. So three die three. So the right side, you see the right side when they apply, uh, right side, usually the real artery is five centimeter. It crosses, it travels behind the IVC, it, it consumes about 2.3 centimeters. So surgeons don't have, you know, it doesn't have a space to apply it on the right side. If early bifurcation, definitely the bifurcation will measure two arteries. So that's the reason. Now we have a lot of uh, clips are available, very costly one. You can apply three layered uh, clips and tie it, but I was 30, 40,000 rupees. So surgeons are reluctant to use that. But now over the next time, if the vein is two centimeter right side, it is no confluencing vein is there, no branches, then we can go on right side safely because don't don't safety at all, always important. So I'm just going, this is a stapler available. You can apply, it's just one, you can cut close to the stapler so that you can have a good stem for your anastomosis. It's a carol patch. Um, in the cadaver is very important. We take a two carol patch, the all past last three month cases. So these are three, so while doing bench dissection, you have to be ultra careful. So not to damage all this thing because people are doing good surgical team has harvested the kidney, but in the bench dissection, we should not damage anything. 
you should go slowly this is uh, soon after the another is left uh, lower pole artery so d uh, there is a deep inferior epicastric artery so the main artery the down one is the inferior epicastric this is another one we usually when you do anastomosis uh, first we release the internal artery then slowly the lower pole artery will do very leisurely and we know the delineation how much of uh, and the pole is supplied if it is less than 10 percent you can sacrifice um, nowadays, what I'm do, I'm doing on the bench. I'll, I'll put a methylene blue uh, during uh, perfusion. I can know the where the extent of the thing, so that whatever can be done, it can be done in the ice slush with the leisurely put chairs around the uh, table, and you lose lose a loop, and uh, so many surgical hands can help. So we can make a bench thing better. So put a methylene blue. When you take a methylene blue, take a one ml. Without uh, you know, uh, say you know, we should be very careful. Put in a can flan and inject carefully otherwise spillage might cause very massive thing your gloves will get messy then the eyes will become blue so you have to be slowly inject you can intel neatly delineate the things so from the back i mean bench dissection itself we can identify this polar artery can be sacrificed or anastomosed this is one way you can identify so soon enough this is one after the anastomosis this became pink and this is another inferior epigastric artery so i'll go very fast sir. give me two minute minutes so two uh, arteries to the two branches of interleac. This is the one we practice nowadays. So very frequently, don't uh, if you have a two arteries, we always enjoy understanding the two branches of interleac artery. So I'll show you some eight pictures of that. So it is very easy to do. Bench resection saved, and uh, your good flow preferentially uh, interleac artery to the renal artery. So things so these are all various uh, double arteries and to the two branches of interleac artery. See. And so many cases where now we get a two uh, parallelly, a parallelly placed two arteries with good gal caliber, we always go for interleac artery. So this is various cases about that and uh, just to go very fast. Uh, so this is a different anastomosis, two anastomosis with external leac. I think many centers prefer doing external leac, we, we are very comfortable with interleac also. Common barrel, so we, and we common barrel to the into external iac and common bad to the external iac so this is a two renal vein and we don't sacrifice any more any because renal veins everything is made for the purpose right so we should not uh, create a unnecessary venous hypertension so we always have two renal veins to the external iac it's a matter of a few minutes extra so sacrificing the polar artery if it's less than 10 percent of um, area supplied we can always sacrifice we want to do an internal uh, inferior epicastric uh, interposition graft but later we uh, changed our mind that no, this is not required. So this is what the thing is. That now we had a case recently. Uh, the inferior uh, uh, branch of the suprarenal artery uh, is the branch of renal artery. But here, the one upper pole, up, uh, early branch was giving the branch to that. So surgeon cut it earlier, I mean, before the branch. So he had to go for anastomosis. So little kind of thing, we got to constantly remind the surgeon. If it's a high flow center, every day morning, we have to remind the lab people and in the early morning, the donor surgical site. So this is what thing is, have you reviewed the uh, scan again? Because sometimes they'll get confused. Uh, Wait, they'll we go... need to summarize. Yes, uh, sir, two minutes. Sir. So this, uh, <laughs> I think one speaker is not there, so I can take some more time. <laughs> Who's not there? <laughs> No, 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 all speakers are there. So the message is, yeah, the message is, the current scenario, multiple artists and donors are no longer considered relative contraindiction for renal transplant. With a good surgical skill, experience of bench surgery, all such donors can be accepted. So this is what the message is. So this is a uh, uh, thing is, you know, before, uh, while doing perfection also, sometimes we see uh, some kind of uh, thing, diuresis. And soon after the uh, perfection, we also have a, this, this enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, uh, more of a surgical topic, which from a nephrologist, it really made a great impact. I think we'll hold on the question answers because otherwise at the end, it becomes very messy. All, all three topics, ke baad, we will have question answers together. I just con con want to congratulate him. Yeah. Uh, he has done job, nothing less than any veteran Absolutely. surgeons. So, a lot of congratulations. Thank you so much from all of us. Uh, many of the surgeons sitting there might be feeling jealous with you. Embarrassed, yeah. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, that's a different, uh, different topic, sir. So, thanks be 